up to? Oh. Uh, if you're willing to introduce yourself, you say a little about who you are, oh, what you've been up to. Oh, hi. Uh, my name is John Ori. I'm the Vice President of the Internet Society Chicago Chapter. I work at MyTel Networks. Uh, we're putting in the phone systems of voice over IP phones for the Chicago Public Schools. Are you familiar with the city's plans to build a citywide wireless internet system? Yes, I've heard about that. Uh, I think it's a, it's a w wonderful uh, idea in theory. I have uh, some concerns about what I've read so far about their plan, but I would like to, to suggest that, at least theoretically, it's a good plan. I would like to amend some ideas and add. We should probably look at uh, some serious dense wave division multiplexing equipment. Uh, I will even mention Meriden Systems by name. Um, as your as your endpoints take a lot more advantage of less more bandwidth than you currently have for the same money. Uh, please look at WiMAX as a, uh, you know, as an alternative to Wi-Fi. I would suggest looking at um, uh, Medellin, Colombia, and some other cities that have already done this. And then I applaud your uh, your uh, your idea again and suggest that in order to get the last mile with the Wi-Fi, work with your community organizations. Uh, and community um, in terms of developing the last mile. And the last mile for me is uh, small businesses and community uh, members uh, inclu included in, uh, in, in reaching the real needs of, of your community rather than some large company. Let's don't treat this as a cash cow. Let's treat this as an opportunity to really reach our people. Rolling. Where do you get your news? Well, most of my news I get from um, the BBC World Service. Uh, I triangulate my news also through. Uh, I listen to the CBC. I like to, and, and uh, in terms of uh, um, in terms of Chicago and U.S. based news, uh, I pay attention to uh, National Public Radio. Um, I uh, I try to triangulate any news I get because I have uh, deep concerns over the uh, over the ownership of our news, specifically. Uh, Fox, NBC, CBS, and any other large news outlet. How would you describe the internet? The internet is for everyone. i start that for now. The internet is, is a worldwide, um, it is, it is the, the, it would be the ties that tether our, our, um, our people to it from all over the world. And being in an international marriage, um, we use the internet um, for all kinds of things, from news to communication to sharing pictures of babies. Um, the internet has been the single uh, largest transformational um, thing that has occurred in my life in terms of, of my ability to, to communicate. I want to add that at the Internet Society, we I routinely have um, video conferencing with UNAM in, in Mexico and also with the Internet Society in Poland. Um, we develop relationships that would be completely impossible if it wasn't for use of the Internet. How is technology or the Internet integrated in your daily life? Well, um, gosh, my phone is Internet based. Um, Whenever I travel, so I, so I don't go bankrupt on, uh, on, on um, cell phone calls, I use Skype so that I can call anywhere in the U.S. or Canada for free, rather than pay 69 cents a minute for roaming. Um, I can get news from anywhere in the world. I can translate newspapers. And in the case of uh, my wife's family down in South America, I can look at the newspaper from her hometown. I can translate that into English. Um, I can easily communicate with any of the in-laws. Um, uh, we use it uh, in helping my, my daughters and doing their homework. Um, it is the key source of information. It is uh, for me, and it is also the glue for any type of communications that I do. And I just want to add that uh, Mitel Networks, which is, which is putting in the phones for the Chicago Public Schools, those phones are going to save a, a bunch of money uh, for the city of Chicago by, by using IP telephony uh, rather than the traditional means. How is your use of technology and the internet different than other people in your families, your extended family? Well, I think we start, how can I put it, you start where it hurts or where it value. So, um, 
for my uh, for my wife. All her only interest is possibly listening to a, a radio station from uh, from, from South America, uh, email, um, and uh, from time to time check out the newspaper. For myself, I look at the internet as a Swiss Army knife. It, it, it is a uh, you give me a problem, you give me, it could be anything, it could be a question about something my daughter asked me and I don't know about, uh, you, know, you name it, a type of insect, uh, a part of the world, uh, uh, global warming, whatever the problem is, if you give me a couple hours, I will suddenly become a resource on that. Um, and I'm not saying that we didn't used to use the uh, things like the World Book Encyclopedia before, but we used to have the library to do that. Now we use the internet uh, pretty much anywhere. Um, now, for other folks, I can think for my aunt, who's almost 80 years old, her only interest is, uh, is genealogy. Um, that's about it. I think it's whatever... The internet is... is it, It's just gob that could be... It's a, or it's, I'll put it like a crystal. It all depends on where your need is at that moment. That's how it impacts on you. And I recommend that if we want to try to introduce people to this, rather than foist it on them in terms of here's the technology, just talk to them, interview them like you're interviewing me, find out what their interests are, and then show them something on the internet that can help uh, help them see value in this uh, unbelievable resource that they have at their, at their disposal. What ways are using internet or other technology you think that very few people are aware of that's even possible? Well, uh, that's a great question. Um, I am a big firm believer in this, these e, these portable applications. I mean, as a technician, I te train technicians. Um, I, I, I use things like there's a, on your little USB drive. I don't have one to show you right now, but uh, with me the second. But little twenty dollar USB drive, I can have portable Skype that I could use. I could go to any library, any place that will allow me to plug in a. a uh, Portable drive, I have my portable Firefox, so that I have all my favorite um, technician sites that I can quickly get to to help troubleshoot your computer if I'm trying to fix your computer. Um, I've got um, this uh, portable Thunderbird, I, I got different, which is ba basically think of all the things that Outlook does, or with like your calendaring, your your, your list of contacts. Um, I use the uh, I use the, uh, the Yahoo briefcase, which is like an online briefcase.yahoo.com as an online um, uh, hard drive space that any of us could have for free for signing up. I always recommend it to my students at a community college to just save your homework up there, so in case something goes wrong. So between saving on the, your floppy or the or that that portable USB drive I talked about, you can also take advantage of the internet to save your work there. Um, I just try to cobble together free and inexpensive ways of working smarter. Uh, whether other people are using these, I don't know. I, but I really recommend that people take a look at portable apps and, um, and also um, open source and specifically things like, uh, you can start with open office. Uh, this is something for the, the students that I taught for my introduction to computers. We give them open office, um, a, the, uh, the free antivirus, the ABG flavor, grease off, free ad aware, all kinds of things that you can cobble together for practically nothing. All we need now is free Wi-Fi or just internet access of any kind. And um, gosh, how many people can I help? Well, how many people are in Chicago? That's how many people can help. This is going to sound like a different kind of question, but how could the media do a better job? Well, please. Well, starting off, please don't. Uh, please don't just try to differentiate the media. Please don't be just another. Think about what you'd be like if you were state owned. Don't be like that. Try to give even handed, uh, give even handed discourse. Uh, um, I'd like to hear, see more things like what NPR has to offer. I'd like to see things like the shows like Democracy Now. I'd like to. I'm very interested. Um, and uh, people that are like what I call equal opportunity offenders, like I was talking with the Capital Steps, where they make fun of the Democrats and the Republicans, be even-handed. Um, even pr present ideas that uh, that you may not dis agree with. Um, try to maybe every once in a while have a bit of a fight with the editor and say, you know, we really do need to get this in the newspaper. We really do need to get this um, online. Thank goodness for the internet, so that 
um, so that some of these smaller players uh, can actually get the word out. But for those of us who rely on the Wall, um, the Wall Street journals, or if you or, if you, or the New York Times, or the Chicago Tribune, or or, or, or things of that nature, um, gosh, we've got to fight to get um, positions other than the, the, the dominant position out there. Whether you agree with it or not, I think it's important of the discourse. Um, and uh, what can, else can the media do? Um, just go back to reflect on why you went into what you do in the media. And I think I have such tremendous respect for anybody in the media. And let's get back to those values. And I understand you could, we got to sell the newspaper, we have to sell the magazine, but from time to time just reflect on why you're in what you're doing. And if you stay with those roots, you'll, you'll be on track and you'll do us all a big service. Thank you, John.